The propeller is a largely overlooked piece of safety hardware. My guess is that many pilots expect this large chunk of aluminum, myself included, to keep spinning on every flight year after year. However, a cursory glance at the AOPA's Air Safety Foundation database revealed a number of blade separation accidents, attributed almost entirely to Nixon corrosion. According to one report, a Piper PA-28 in cruise flight began shaking violently. The pilot shut down the engine and saw part of the propeller blade missing. He safely executed a forced landing in a nearby field. The propeller was fractured 17 and a half inches from the hub's center. There were fatigue features that originated from a nick on the flat face of the propeller. The shape of the nick boundary indicates that it was not blended. Paint from the flat face extended into the nick, indicating that the nick was present when the propeller was last painted. Our prop was overhauled in the fall of 2008. When was the last time your prop or your rental airplane's prop was overhauled? We had a major engine overhaul on 28665 and decided it would be a good idea to have our engine and prop combination dynamically balanced. I arrived at the Sensenik Propeller Shop located on the Lancaster PA Airport on a blustery October morning. Unfortunately, the audio has too much wind noise, so I'll summarize what transpired in the next few minutes. Prior to a dynamic balance, the technician inspects the blade for nicks and imperfections. Mark found a small gouge on the back of our blade about 1 16th of an inch deep by 1 half inch long. His determination was that this was too severe for a field repair, so we would need to have the prop removed and overhauled again at the repair facility located across the street. I arrived the next morning and the blade had already been bead blasted to remove all the paint. Tony, the technician, will take us through all the steps to overhaul a fixed pitch aluminum propeller. We apologize for the machine shop noise, but this was just another day for the folks at Sensenik. Business as usual. So anyway, what I'm doing now is getting all the numbers, before numbers, write them down, and then I'm going to check edge alignment, tip elevation, track, all that stuff before I start, because I can always adjust it as we go. The reason why you want to take out, this, we're, we're going to say overhaul now instead of field repair, is because the more a propeller flies, this is happening to the blade as it's flying, okay, especially out at the tip. And there's a lot of forces that people take for granted that are happening in flight. While this is happening, the metal is annealing. The outer surface is getting hard. And the longer you fly it, the harder it gets, especially if you fly a lot. So, with that said, it's like taking a piece of copper wire and bending it and bending it, all of a sudden it breaks. When you get, um, a nick in a leading edge or a big gouge or something like that, as that metal hardens, a crack can form and you can have blade tip failure, which for someone like yourself that's been flying a while, that wouldn't be fun. So that's why you need to take off, in overhaul, I take off the whole outer skin. Uh, by the book, it's eight thousandths, like four on a side, and that's usually what it winds up being, okay. in thickness. Okay. So. And also, that goes for the leading edge, too. If there's a nick there, that's why you need to do a field repair if possible, if you're comfortable with it. When the blades come around, they have to fall in to within a certain spec. Like, one can't be like this, one can't be like that. So the way you check it is you mark your stations on the nose, on the round side. Okay? And then it's a 180. Pick the prop up, spin it, come back in. Now you can see that's right on the button. There's no gap. If there's a gap, then the, the, the blade without the gap has to be taken down so that you can match it up. Now, since I have those marks on the nose here, I'm going to check. This is called track. And what that means is as the, as the prop is spinning, the blades, once again, they have to come in line within, I think the rule is 62 thousandths. Anything above that, it has to be uh, either uh, bent or whatever. You know, whatever you got to do to, you can disc it out sometimes.
And if that's not in spec, you could get a vibration. Depending on how far it's out, it could be severe, you know? And you do that on each of the cord marks, or each of the marks you did? Yeah, see, I'm bringing it in, and it lines right up. It doesn't scrape or anything. It's perfect. Okay. This has all the sensitive crops, all the station lines marked out on it. It's probably 60 years old. And it's still perfect, lines right up with that table. Like, this is a profile, a cross section. This is the first station, and so on down the blade. What I do first is I check fit, okay? That's not too bad. And I mark where it's high. Generally, they're pretty close. I usually start out with a 50 grit, you know, real aggressive. Then I go back over that with an 80 that gets out those marks. And then I finish up with two, two uh, scotch brights. done with all this, we're going to pre-balance it. See where I am on the balance stand. So as you can see here, we have one blade that's a little bit heavy and horizontal. And really, that's very minuscule. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to mess with that right now. I can get that with a polisher at the end. Okay. What I always look for, if, if that's a little heavy, one blade's a little heavy, I go to vertical and see where we are there. I'll bet that was the heavy blade. So it might be a little bit in this area on the hub. It might be a couple swipes in this section. Okay. The whole prop is going to be coarse scotch bright, and then I'm going to do um, medium, which is maroon scotch bright, just the flat sides. Then I'm going to polish. Then I'm going to check balance again, fix that if I need to. And then from there, uh, I'll take it over to the table. Do the final numbers, check edge alignment because I can file or whatever I need to do, and then we're going to twist it, you know, reset the angles, and um, bring it back over here, buff it out, and we're ready to alodyne paint. When, when, they make a, when they make a prop, when they get it approved for the FAA to be a, a product, they have what they call station lines, and that's from Zero Station, which is dead center. And what they do is um, they come up with a, the engineers come up with a, uh, a plan form, um, and they'll, they'll get a prototype, and what they do is they epoxy on the station lines, they epoxy um, uh, sensors all the way down and the wires are all epoxied onto the, the prop. 
on both blades, and they come down, and then there's a guy, the pilot flies a plane, and then there's an engineer that sits there with a laptop. Now, there's a laptop, and he records how much vibration is happening throughout the length of the blades. And there's a criteria that they have uh, for that. Now, if there's a lot of vibration, they land right away. And I've seen guys, the engineers come out with a, an electric grinder and just make an elliptical tip from a square to an elliptical. And they jump back in the airplane, they, they take off, and they see what that does. Okay? If that didn't do anything, then they land the airplane, take the prop off, go back to the engineering room, and start all over again. Now, once they do get it approved, they have... And like I say, it depends on model and make and all that. On this particular prop, uh, since it goes by 20, the percentage uh, from zero stations, they go 20, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, and then 100% is the tip. And you know, it's, it's hard to measure 28 or 22.80 inches on a, <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to have a calipers this long, you know, it's, it's impractical, so. If you're in close, in here you can do it relatively accurately, but. And now I'm just measuring, after I've overhauled the, the prop, I'm measuring width and thickness of each station line, which will go in the after column, and then you'll be able to see just yeah, what I took right. off. Right, okay, all right. And do the same thing. Okay, now I've just flipped the prop around and I'm checking edge alignment. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but. God, that's superior. What's that? Okay. Superior. Superior edge alignment. There is no. Now, if I have that down, Pat, I'm just going to check one. The first station here. Boy, that's right on the money. If you have this, the rest of them are going to be fine. And you can also. Look. Going down, we're going to check. We're going to check our pitch. Yeah, we're going to reset it if it needs okay. to be. If it's on, it's on. If it isn't, I'll, I'll reset it. Right. Put it on the station line. As you can see, it's right there. Right on the money. Okay. Now I'm going to re rotate the prop to check the other blade. Same station. that okay that's off a little bit we'll adjust that by hand we don't even need that at all these have a profile cut out that generally fits most fixed pitches and then I have a cheater bar here I just put it on the station line and this is all by feel. Give it a couple. Give it a couple pushes. A little bit more. Perfect. Cotton cloth, bucking wheel, dual groove, 180 grit. And it basically, what it, it's called final polish. The only other thing I'm going to do to it after that is scotch bright everything by hand because that'll remove any dirt, fingerprints, etc. Aladine won't stick to grease. It's a little, better. It's a little nuance. It's, oh, yeah, I know. I'm that way too. Like I say, when I'm working in my, in my wood shop. Yeah, it's to two minutes. Because now we're putting it in the... Allodyne tank. The Allodyne tank, okay. Yeah, and you leave it in there for, what you say, a minute or two? Okay. As you can see already, it's turning like a golden Ooh. caramel color. Well, what started out last Friday as a dynamic prop balance turned into a complete overhaul. We want to thank Tony here, Tony, at the uh, Sensenic Propeller Shop on the Lancaster Airport uh, for 
going through and showing us exactly what they do when they completely overhaul a propeller. Ours will be painted and back on the airplane tomorrow, and hopefully we can balance it as long as there's no problem with the weather. For Aviation Safety Videos, I'm Bob Reed. Have a safe flight. Bingo. Thank you.